Welcome back to a sunny day in Thailand. I had a problem with the lithium battery on the motorbike today. It died at 51 kilometers and I'm really starting to get annoyed. So it's time to send an angry email back to the factory and find out what's going on. Because I was getting more than 51 kilometers on the lead acid pack when I first bought the bike. Anyway, that's for a different rant. Today I want to bring you up to speed on a trip I took to Bangkok. It was for my buddy's birthday party, and I'm going to spare you the details of all of that debauchery, but I took some time to walk around my favorite uh, electronics neighborhood called Ban Mo, because I wanted to buy some little LED uh, replacement bulbs for the blinker and the license plate and rear light uh, bulbs on the motorbike to save even a little bit more power. So I got these guys. They're actually Japanese, which is pretty cool. Then as I'm going through the, all the little booths, I found, I spotted this. It is a battery capacity voltage current power time meter which is pretty cool. It's got uh, wires for voltage and a current shunt. I've never seen one in this style, but I'm assuming they know what they're doing. And it's got some potting on the back, but it is rubbery like bathroom silicone. So whatever that's worth. Now the funny thing is, on the front case, it says, if you can read that, not read the manual, do not set the key, and then something in Chinese. Now, of course, it didn't come with a manual. It's just in a little plastic bag. So I have not read the manual. I do not know how to set the key, but it does have a part number, JS-C11. If you can see that, focus, you... Uh, so, that will have some adventures with that. Maybe do some A-B testing with this versus the board I'm building. Now, the other thing I thought was, on the off chance, I'm going to bring this with me and see if I can find a new Atmel ice. Now, I've got a cable on order from China, and I have the raw circuit board on order from China. But, I can't do anything until they arrive and I'm kind of dead in the water. So I walked around to all the little Arduino kind of shops. Nobody had this, as they say in Thai, my me, no have. And then I went, I remembered this shop, and I'll put the storefront here. It's a little more of a formal looking storefront with glass cases, and they, they look like they're uh, really manufacturer's reps uh, in Thailand for, um, big electronics companies and I showed the guy at the counter this and he looked at it and said oh my my me and then he said uh what what is it called and I said it's an Atmel ice and he looked at me tilted his head a little bit walked over to this counter and voila I have a new Atmel ice which is the full system with the unit and all of the cables. So this is the full-blown product, which is the also a duplicate of the original one I bought. This cost me $156. Oh, the things I have to do to support my little hobby. Anyway, so we're going to try this afternoon and see if we can talk to a known good board. Maybe I'll connect it up to this Arduino Due. This way, Arduino Due. Uh, and just probe the board and see if we can get it to recognize the processor. I'm not going to try and flash anything on here, but if it recognizes the processor, then I'm back in business. We're going to click apply and we're going to click read. Ah, there it is. Oh, 
All right, we have a working ice board that's talking to the due and reading 3.2 volts. Let me try another board. Okay, I plugged in version one of my board, which was known good. And I'm gonna come over here and I have changed the chip type to the C21E18A. We'll click apply and we'll click read and we have the chip. That's too good. Now let's try my version two board with the swapped microcontroller. Okay, I'm back on my version two board with the new microcontroller. We have the same chip specification, but I'll click apply anyway, and then I'll click read. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, we are back in business, folks. Awesome, now I can move on from where I was. And a quick addendum, just for fun, I thought I'd plug the bad one back into the board with the original bad cable into board version two. Let's come back up here. Same chip. Now I had to select the different serial number because I've got two different devices. This is the active one. So I apply that and I read and look at that. It's talking to the chip. This is the bad one. This is the one I kept getting the errors on. What the hell is this? Peer pressure? I bought a hundred and fifty something dollar new part and now this one decides to start working again oh my Buddha well at least I've got two and another raw board on the way I'll be able to debug the crap out of this stuff okay I've got a really sinking feeling about something here folks and I think I've done a Mikey stupid because I went back and reviewed the previous video when this was working. And I had on this little jumper cable, I had this end plugged into the ice and I had this end plugged into the board and it worked. The video where it failed was set up like this with this end plugged into the ice and this end plugged into the board. Let's see what happens. So we come over here. We apply. And we read. You son of a bitch. That was the problem the whole time. I must have got clever at some point and thought, well, I'm I'm unplugging this and plugging it in so many times as I fiddle with the board. I just want to have the independent end plugged in here with pin one. Pin one is clearly marked and this is keyed. You cannot put this in backwards, but this is a one way cable. This is a one way cable. You fucking sneaky bastard. Now, Granted, all the Atmel documentation has this end plugged into the, your device under test and this end plugged in the ice, but it doesn't say don't reverse the cable because it looks like a kind of a reversible cable if you're not using this little dangly bit on the end because this pin one goes onto my board and that is a keyed connector. It must be because on one side, the one connector points up, and on one side, the one connector points down. I can't believe this. I cannot believe I boned myself this hard. Well, let this be a warning. I'm going to make this very clear in the description of this video, so hopefully when everybody searches for a problem with their Atmel ICE error code, 4109 it means plug the bloody connector in right oh well now i've got one good working ice two good working ices and i have another board in the mail i could 
catch this thing on fire and still have double redundant backup. Oh, I need a drink. All right, let this be a lesson. Follow the pictures in the manual and don't try to be clever. Even though it says don't be stupid, the moral of the story is don't be stupid. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again. And I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.